and uh, he also has a degree in peace studies. So Falgan is um, also going to be asking questions um, of panelists at the end. So I will be organizing that. Thank you. Now, um, I don't want to go to that. I want to stop share. Oh, sorry. There we are. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. And let's start with um, Dachin. And I think if you're not, oh no, I think you're fine. Uh, Dachin, yeah. are you going to be sharing? Are you going to be sharing any um, screen? Or I think, I, I, I okay. Speaking. Okay. Then I think John Majay will just, you know, make you the large picture and we'll all disappear hopefully <laughs> thank you thank you so much and uh, um, very happy to join you all of you we are in a different time zones in different weathers yes. we are into the summer very hardcore summer at the moment in the western part of india uh, around 45 celsius degree temperature so yeah great to see you all of you uh, uh, I think uh, I must uh, start that at the moment when I'm speaking, our theater group has organized a small poetry session into the crimination ground where normally when a person dies, you know, people go and burn the body. So uh, you know, that kind of rituals. Uh, Hindu society follow. So that kind of crimination ground we have. So we have organized the poetry session. Right now it is going on there. And since whole day, since morning, the police department of my city is keep calling us why you have organized this poetry session. Now this poetry session is actually in the memory of our friend who committed suicide. I think three, four months back, great poet, but into, into the depression for many other, you know, reasons. So we are just remembering him and we, 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 are, we are just remembering him. We are trying to recite his poem and trying to remember his works, great work for the marginalized communities. Since morning, police is trying to stop us not together, even into, into the crimination ground. It's not a public space. I mean, when person die, you know, people go there. I, actually, that is the place. Why I'm sharing? Because, you know, today the kind of socio-political, you know, culture we have in India, it is, it is extremely difficult actually to speak anything. If you are dissent, you are an anti-national. If you are speaking against that in, injustice, social injustice or political injustice, you are anti-national. You know, not just the government, not the law department, even the society brand you as anti-national, next light or, you know, different kind of names. In this kind of socio-political culture, I think surviving as a theater artist, surviving as a political artist, a political theater artist and doing the political activism, uh, it is extremely difficult. Uh, let me go back actually before two years, uh, in 2018, at the midnight, around two o'clock in the morning, on 27th July 2018, around 500 policemen, they raid on the locality where I live. They, they brutally beat to women, children, elderly people, youth, they broke all sort of whatever the vehicles were parked outside the, our homes. And we surprised them, why, what is happening? Why police is brutally beating us? We didn't understand. But that will suddenly happen. And after some time, I mean, once this incident happened, and in the morning around 10 to 50, 10 o'clock, we came to know that a policeman had a small, you know, tension. I mean, they had a quarrel with each other. There is a boy from the my community and there's a policeman 
and they had a fight with each other and that policeman gave the message to the chief of the police of my city and they said that these all chara people i mean chara community people they are coming towards the police chowki to torch it so please send excessive police forces chief of the police he sent more than 500 police personnel they brutally beat an up us including me including my mother in law who is paralyzed who was paralyzed who is still paralyzed and uh, they punch on her face and brutally beat her up to the kids also i mean why i am sharing in in the beginning of my talk why i am sharing this such a brutal you know violent things with you i think it is important to understand the context that why this is happening it has a historical you know connections in 1871 the british constructed an act called criminal tribes act because there were so many nomadic tribes in india who were not under control of the british because people who were under the control and people who were slave during the british empire in india those were sedentary society not the nomadic people nomadic people used to move from one place to another place they were not tax payers and they were not under the tax net of the british british wanted to capture them at the one and put them into the one place at the one place and use them as a cheap labor so they constructed an act because british were coming actually from the sedentary society and for them it is very difficult to understand that why people are moving from one place to another place now i think the british forgot the colonial regime forgot that once upon a time every person on this on this earth were nomad and nomadism is a civilization and they could not understand their civilization and they branded entire communities the people who were moving from one place to another place as a criminals now there was another reason before like 1871 the one a theory got developed in europe which is called a eugenic theory by the caesar lombroso the criminology caesar lombroso he theoretically proved that person can be i mean criminality can be hereditary a person can be born criminal so that kind of theory he invented and because of his and his theory i mean the mayor of the london you know they they believed in his theory and the policy maker of the britain the believed in his theory because of that under that influence they they created this act criminal tribes act and they branded more than 198 tribes by birth criminals they constructed settlements rehabilitation camps those were like a nazi concentration camps not horrible like a nazi concentration camps but people who were moved you know always on the move they were actually forcibly kept in isolation at one place now who were these nomadic tribes what they used to do most of the nomadic tribes were traveler and most of nomadic tribes were entertainers jugglers painters snake charmers entertainers you know such a great artist because in the absence of the television and in the absence of any entertainment media these people used to entertain india these people were kept into the settlement and this act was go on since 1947 when india got independence when india got independence even not gandhi even not ambedkar even not you know uh, uh, gokhale i mean these are the freedom fighters and the political leader in india i mean the big people every independent day we we remember them we salute them but none of the this leader they seriously you know take a single action for the justice of this nomadic tribe that why the british branded them as a criminals and why they kept them into the isolation in the settlement if you go to bombay and if you travel from bombay to pune that your train and your buses will actually pass through 
from the mountains and many in, uh, and caves and in, in Hindi we can book that I, I don't know canals you know uh, when tra a train pass so whatever the railway line where it will lay down from between Bombay to Pune those entire you know railway line was laid down by by the prisoners by the inmates of the settlements my forefathers India got independence in 1947 the independent government which was ruled by the elite class and they thought that if British branded the certain section of the indigenous people as a criminals I mean there may be something so they set up a committee whether these people should be free or not I mean when India got independence people who were into the jail they got free they automatically got free to celebrate freedom but my forefathers were still into the into the those camps settlements you know this concentration camps this committee which was set up by the independent government it took five years and 16 days i mean after five years and 16 days this committee submitted the report and said that criminal tribe sect is the blot on the constitution of india and it should be it should be immediately repealed but it should be replaced by habitual offender act so see one act is a criminal tribe set which was never repealed they replace into the habitual offender act habitual offender act is still existing across the country all the state have this act and still more than 60 million people of this country they are branded as a born criminals who were once upon a time the great entertainers coming to the my community and art and protest my forefathers when they did not have any sort of livelihood after independence after when they got freedom you know from the settlements there were no policy even still in 2021 we don't have any rehabilitation policy in any of the indian state in the central government so people who were hungry they started petty crimes and that become an art i mean stealing become an art stealing is an art i mean you and me you we cannot steal right you really you, you require art it's a theater you know it's an invisible theater you don't know that theater is going on i mean the kind of my forefathers used to perform and the kind of modus operandi we had it, it was total theater and there was no uh space to fumble in your dialogue if you fumble you're gone you're into the jail so my father and my father's generation they used to steal not in the in the gujarat where i in the state they used to stay actually in other states in indian states and the kind of modus operandi they had for the stealing that is a complete theater as i say i mean it has a script writer it has a recce it has a rehearsals you know it has an actor it has a dialogue it has a costume it has everything so many years ago in 1990s we grew up and we saw that so many times police came they brutally beaten up to our parents and that was a part of our life even i was in college i saw so many times policemen are you know beating to my father and that was a part of life we didn't surprise that why this is happening i mean we thought that this is a part of our life okay then in 1998 a, 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 such a horrible incident took place in the eastern part of India. A, a person called Budhan, B U B H A N, Budhan Sabar, like we are Chara community, it's a Sabar community in the eastern part of India. He was brutally beaten up by the police and killed into the jail. And police set up a case that it's a, it's a suicide case. You know, it's not a killing case, it's not murder, it's a suicide case. A very well known writer, Mahashita Devi, fought the case and it was proven that he was brutally beaten up. And that was the case which has ignited a huge awareness across the country. And people come together, oh, okay. So the colonial history, it is still haunting to these 60 million people. And because of that, this person was died. Because of this person was murdered into the jail, into the in, in the jail custody. He was uh, 
uh, in the lockup, he was brutally beaten up by the police. So such kind of dialogue and such kind of you know dialogues were starting. Now this interim judgment of that incident, the interim judgment of the Kolkata High Court, that reached into the newsletter to the library where we have started a library in the Charanagar because we were not allowed to go into the library, into the shops, everywhere. If you if you are talking in my language. If I'm talking in my language anywhere, even in my city, immediately people will alert. Oh, you are because they understand the language. And if you say chara, that's a finish. Okay, so that time we started the library, founded by the very known linguist Dr. Ganesh Devi and writer Mahashita Devi. And we started the, you know, uh, he told me that why don't you make a play actually based on this interim judgment? And I directed and written a play called Budhan. The journey started from there. Udhan play become an identity of my community who was once upon a time known as a criminals. Now this is this community is known as, oh, okay, this is the community where children are performing this Budhan play in the, at least among the uh, civil society. We are 22 year old theater group. We performed more than 53 plays and performed more than 1800 shows across the country. It's the fourth generation which are constantly performing on the different issues of the nomadic and denotified tribes. And it, it is accepted. I mean, it is the most com active community theater in India. There are so many good outputs of the entire, this sustainable theater journey. As I said, that we have trained more than 300 youth. Now these 300 youth, they were not trained as in just actor, director, writer. But these all more than 300 youth were trained as a you know, social action group and social leaders. So they just, they become leaders. They become a creative leaders. Whatever happened in the any other DNT communities, these people go and they speak, they perform and they try to solve the problem. I'm sharing just one successful example. Do I have time for two, three minutes? So, uh, Dakshin, I think we'll have to come back to your another example in the discussion. Okay. Um, just so that we have time to flow through, but very, sure. very powerful. Thank you. Um, so we'll go to Carolyn, um, who is also speaking in this session. Thank you, Dakshin. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Halito Chimichagma Chihuchafayat, Carolyn Dunn. What I said was uh, good morning. My name is Carolyn Dunn. I am coming to you from the Kickapoo Nation um, in Indian Territory, just outside of uh, what's now called Oklahoma City in the um, state of Oklahoma. Um, and I come to you this morning um, by the grace of my ancestors and by the grace of um, many people who have come before me and by the grace of many people who will come after me. Um, this morning, um, I wake up and, and hear um, from Dakshin, it, you know, in, in speaking about the history and, and the struggles of the community and how the community reacts in, in performance um, and hearing the birds in the background, hearing the sound of of the world um, in which you come from um, and hearing the world in which I come from and, um, and greet you with great love and respect and greet all of you with great love and respect this morning. Um, for those who aren't familiar with our colonial history um, in what is now known as the United States, Oklahoma, uh, and where I come from, which I, I still call Indian Territory, Oklahoma is, um, is Choctaw word, and it means the, uh, they are red. The literal translation, Ogla is um, people, Hama is red. And so the trans little, literal translation from the Choctaw language is land of the red people. Um, over 500 different uh, nations, languages, um, communities um, of indigenous peoples that reside 
within what is now known as, as the United States yet reside as separate sovereign, sovereign nations. Um, and the work that, that many are doing is very different. Um, there are many different political issues that face indigenous people. Um, you know, on top of the fact that we're in this global pandemic and that um, this pandemic has affected indigenous people disproportionately to um, the rest of American society and, um, and other, other indigenous um, and communities that we call communities of color um, disproportionately affects African-American uh, Latinx communities in the United States, um, American Indian communities in the United States. And, you know, having lost um, members of my own family to this pandemic, um, and the rituals that sustain us in these moments, you know, are, you know, because we come together as, as community people and, um, and the rituals that we have, have had the, the knowledges that we have, the community knowledges that we have in terms of coming together, um, have been disrupted in so many ways. Um, and so when folks pass, and when folks are go to the next world and, and pass from the various and sundry um, health issues that are facing our communities are now compounded by, um, by this global pandemic. And we are affected um, in so many more ways than, than folks understand and folks realize. Um, we're losing family members, we're losing community members very dear to us. Um, and our theater community is very small, our indigenous theater community, and having lost many greats to of our community to this pandemic, it has been devastating in so many ways. And the wonderful thing about all of this is that we still can come together in this way, um, in, in this way, in this Zoom platform, you know, coming to all of the world through our homes and inviting everyone into our homes and being able to share that um, is, you know, is, is a blessing, I think, of this particular time in the world, um, but still at the same time so fraught with complications and fraught with um, disease and fraught with um, pain and, and fraught with isolation. And that's not how we operate traditionally in our communities. Isolation is not, um, is not something that we have, a, you know, have an understanding with. And so not being able to share in community um, has been devastating as well. Um, but this is not something that we, that we aren't equipped to handle. Uh, indigenous people have been decimated, our populations have been decimated by disease for you know for hundreds of years and so we have the the knowledge the ancestral knowledge we have the tools for survival that our traditions have taught us and that the past has taught us but we are surrounded by a society that doesn't that doesn't understand that that doesn't um, understand that we have the knowledge that we need in order to survive and so i want to recognize that to recognize our indigenous knowledge systems that teach us how to to live in these times that that with humor and with grace and with dignity and i want to um, talk about that today as well um, but i did want to share some songs with you to start with um, this morning a gathering song and then a song of of blessing for all of us to be able to share with one another. And my uh, one of my felines, my cat has decided that she, you can see her tail, she's decided at this moment to, to say hello to the world. So you might, you might see some movement <laughs> in that way. So I want to um, start the session and start with, with a song this morning, um, a gathering song that was taught to me by, um, by one of my grandmothers who has since gone on. It's been just a year um, since her passing. And 
we miss her very dearly, but grateful for her being on the other side to continue her prayers and to continue her work in the world. So the words of that song are, look at all the, it's, it's a Choctaw song and the translation into English of those words is, look at all the beautiful people dancing. And it is, you know, in the sense, very much a performative um, when we dance in, in community, um, whether it's our ceremonial life as part of who we are as, as tribal peoples and how we relate to one another as tribal peoples is, um, is in the community. And also we represent diaspora upon diaspora. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I am coming to you from Indian Territory, Oklahoma, which is the home of 39 different um, federally recognized tribes. Um, but it was not the home of our ancestors in that sense. We were forced here to Indian territory um, by the federal government by treaty. And, um, and the federal government as time went on after um, what we call Indian removal forced us, um, many of the tribes here to Oklahoma, which was originally the home of only um, five or six tribes that still reside here. Uh, the Caddo, Osage, Kiowa, Comanche, and Wichita peoples. This is their ancestral land. But when the rest of us were forced here from what we now um, call North Carolina, um, uh, Kentucky, Louis, um, Kentucky, I'm trying to, the old nation, Alabama, uh, South Carolina, um, these parts of the world, and we were forced westward to um, to this area um, by gunpoint many, many times, rounded up, uh, forced to walk in the middle of winter to, um, to this place. Uh, so it, this is land that has been, been fought for um, and, and promised for and shipped away over the years by the federal government. Um, and we are trying to regain uh, many of those many of those protections. Um, you know, very long, complicated history of many removals over time. Most recently, 
uh, relocations to urban areas in the 1950s with the promise of jobs and housing um, by the federal government. A lot of those uh, did, not, did not come to pass. Um, many reasons why people leave uh, their homeland and leave their place and journey elsewhere. My own family situation, my uh, grandparents left this part of the world, left the Creek Nation, um, which is just north of us now here in, in Oklahoma. Um, and also family in Louisiana, family in Mississippi, um, leaving very early on in, in the uh, 20th century to uh, forge better lives in, um, in, in, place, in urban areas. My family chose Los Angeles. So my parents were both born in Los Angeles. I was born in Los Angeles, um, raised in California, raised in Los Angeles and in Northern California in, um, in the territory of the Yurok Karuk, Talawa, um, Wiat peoples, where I also grew up. And I consider that my other home in, in California. Um, you know, relocations upon relocations and, and for us to be able to, to live here is, is a grace, you know, for us to be able to come to the place where, um, you know, where my ancestors were forced and where they lived and, and made lives for themselves and continued, um, you know, again, with that ancestral knowledge of who we are, where we come from, um, and then for me to be raised amongst another, yet another indigenous nation and to um, be accepted into um, those communities and be accepted into the ceremonial life of those communities. Um, so we bring who we are embodied um, in, from our ancestors, who we were, who we are becoming, who we will be um, is is that space. And so we carry with us those stories, those songs, those ceremonies, and then we bring them into, um, into other territories and are able to share those songs and, um, and to share that ancestral knowledge, yet be still be in diaspora, diaspora upon diaspora upon diaspora. Um, and with always understanding and embodying the space where we came from is not the space that we exist in now. There are so many issues that are facing our communities um, and what I want to put on the table today for our discussion is, um, is the, you know, the, all of these issues that are facing Indian country and, and what I think of as, as a person and, and in my own family unit, um, what are, what are, what faces us and what do we have to overcome in so many ways, but, but our bodies still have that ancestral knowledge and we know how to ceremonially, how to ritually, how to linguistically combat these issues that are facing us. Um, and, and for me, the issues that face us that, that, that are at levels of, of destroying us are, is the missing and murdered indigenous women phenomenon that, that is happening um, not only in the United States, but in Canada and in Latin America, you know, hemispherically in, in the indigenous Americas. It continues to be um, continues to be an ongoing issue that women just disappear and and are murdered and no one is ever brought to justice and there are many many reasons for this um, for this onslaught against indigenous women and it happens you know in in our border areas and and so many of these numbers go unreported. Um, and so I want to, to thank you. That. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Shauna. Um, um, it's so difficult to stop both of your stories while you're talking, but um, um, I think we will um, take up a discussion now very briefly. Um, we've gone slightly over with the um, talking, but uh, let's see. I know there was there were some questions um, in the chat and I I know Falgan 
is um, also available asking questions. Um, Joe, would you like to start? If I can make um, myself talk. You'll have to unmute. <laughs> I'm unmuted. That's the most common word, right? Now, the most common phrase is, you're muted. <laughs> or you're not muted, and then that's always bad. <laughs> so like, it, well, so amazing, all, guys. To, mm -hmm. to both Carolyn and Daxon, they have a, a there's a, a Cree term, uh, is hi, hi. And generally, it's used as thank you, but also it's, it's much broader. And it's thank you for something given. And thank you to both of you for what you gave us. Um, and uh, I mean, the problem of missing and murdering women is just devastating, uh, for sure. That's my input. <laughs> thank you. And it connects so, so much to um, what Dakshin shared just previously too. Um, I know there was actually a question in the chat um, that was from Urvashi, oh, I believe. Um, so the question was about what exactly is a denotified tribe and how is it different from scheduled tribes? So that may need to be discussed very briefly. Um, for people, because people are tuning in from different parts of the world. Yeah, I I I thought I have responded to that uh, chat box, but I will be happy to more than you know respond uh, in more detail. See, Indian India's uh, this social category things are very complex. It's a very complex political problem. We have a three social categories: scheduled caste, which are which uh, who are the people who were once upon a time. Uh, you know, treated as untouchables and still the problem is still going on and people are still treated as untouchables. People don't touch them. So scheduled caste, uh, scheduled tribe, Adivasis, indigenous people and other backward community, OBC, other backward communities. So, so uh, denotified tribes are largely included into the OBC list. Ideally, they should be included into the scheduled tribe. But this demand, since independence going on, but there is no result. There are so many reports, so many presentations. The only problem, why there is no positive result, because denotified tribes are the most scariest, I mean, fear they have, because if they will do anything, if they protest or if they ask anything from the state, you know, state has a lot of hands to, to capture them and to incarcerate them. So people are extremely isolated, very segregated people. They don't come together in democracy. If people are coming not together, you don't have a justice. If you, have, if you want justice, you must have people. You must have masses. You must have hates. But, you know, DNT people, they don't have a, that kind of masses and they are not coming together. That is why this demand is long pending since independence that they should be included into the scheduled tribe. Other backward community is a problem because other backward community is like a general communities. It's, I mean, I mean, there is no point actually to have a reservation within OBC. That's what I'm saying. I think um, in that, in these circumstances that you guys are describing um, that the theater becomes so central you know, to drawing people together. And Carolyn spoke also to the, um, you know, the problems of doing so in the pandemic as well. But but can can we talk a little bit um, briefly about what theater means in this context? Maybe starting with Carolyn. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, it was it, it. You know, so much of the conversation today, and and thank you. Um, Joe and, and Daxon for acknowledging, you know, these sort of these global issues that that surround indigeneity that we've that we've inherited from the colonial power um, and as colonized peoples that that how we, you know, how we we, we can 
share, um, you know, in so many ways and the work that, that we do, um, you know, it, it, for me at, for individually as a playwright and how I can and make those, um, make our voices heard and known, um, you know, and, and then I feel like violence against women, um, violence against uh, the environment, violence against our, our communities um, is, is so much wrapped together. It, it's, it's, it's something that's, that's at a systemic level, at least here in the United States, um, but part of sort of this Western idea of colonial practice um, and, and how, how we as communities can react to this. Um, one of the plays that I'm that that I've written and that has that I that I'm continuing to develop now is called Three Sisters, and um, it's it's about three. It's about climate change. It's about um, how, especially, it takes place in Louisiana amongst um, Louisiana tribes, um, where you know, it, especially in the Gulf Coast, where the Homa Nation. Um, and the Chidimachas are losing, literally losing land to the ocean because of, of climate change. And how that's, that's so interwoven with the colonial idea of mastery over the landscape rather than um, partnership and symmetry you know, with, with the landscape and how we can use theater practice and performance to bring light to these issues. I've written two plays now that deal with, um, that, that address this, the missing and, and murdered indigenous women phenomenon, but site specific. So um, site specific to California where I was born and raised in the sense that there are so many um, federally unrecognized tribes in the state of California that the state identifies and the state says, yes, these are indigenous peoples. And yes, these are people that may not be recognized by the federal government, but the state of California says these are indigenous peoples, um, which is fraught with, you know, many other complications as well. The, you know, at the passage of the Violence Against Women Act that was authored by President Biden when he was in the Senate and he was a proponent of it, um, extended protection, federal protections for indigenous women um, that were taken away legislatively over the years. And so, um, and so these provisions placed place back into uh, legislation, federal protections for indigenous women, but only indigenous women who are members of federally recognized tribes. So um, I talk about that in, in, you know, in the play um, to talk about that there are people that don't have these protections that are continually um, victimized and preyed upon by the larger, uh, more dominant culture. I'm sorry, Shana, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's, it's so important, um, the work that you guys are doing. Unfortunately, we're going to have to transition because we have a dance panel next. And um, they're all on a time schedule too, and we're a little bit over time um, due to some um, time zone difficulties at the beginning. So I would love to um, continue this discussion. Um, we will we will talk further, um, but for now, I'm going to have to close this section of the of the panels and. Um, going to introduce the dance panel. Um, 